Hey, what's Dr. Morales? Uh, coming at you from my home office again and uh, just answering my weekly frequently asked questions that I get from patients and that I meet in in person, also on social media and wherever. So this is a great question because I don't, um, I don't think I've ever answered this one before, surprisingly, and it's a very important question. It's related to breast augmentation. And the question is, is what, are the, what are the types of breast augmentation? Uh, what are the planes of breast augmentation? Um, that's a great question because it is a very, very, very um, important technique that we use as, as plastic surgeons to, for the placement of the breast implant and then where, you know, how, how it ages with the body. So I just took a few minutes earlier and I'm, I'm basically I drew out the, well, I would say the three dominant uh, techniques of planes, called, they're called planes of where the implant lives in space of the breast, on the chest and the breast. So the first uh, plane is called a subglandular plane, which means it's underneath the breast tissue. Okay, it's only the breast tissue that the uh, this plane is in. So it's on top of the chest muscle and it's on top of the ribs. So this is an example of that through, uh, on a, in a side image. So it's this one here. So the blue is the is the uh, the chest muscle, and then this is the implant on top of the muscle, and the breast tissue lives all on top of here. Okay, and the breast tissue goes to the ducts. That's called a subglandular plane. The next plane is called a submuscular plane. It's completely submuscular, where the implant is completely covered by the muscle. And so here's the muscle in blue, and the implant is completely behind this the muscle called submuscular. I would say most surgeons now, especially in the past, like, oh, it's maybe, I don't know, 15, 15 years or so, are using a hybrid of these two planes. It's called a dual plane. This is the one I use. So the implant is placed behind the muscle in the top half of the breast. On the bottom half of the breast is covered by the breast tissue. Okay? So the chest and the, and the breast tissue is pushed in front of the implant. So it gives you two benefits, and I'll tell you what that is. The benefit of it is, is that on the upper part of the breast, the implant is covered by more soft tissue, which means it's the muscle. And so it looks a little bit softer, a little more natural, appearing on the upper part of the breast, and it recreates the look of normal breast tissue. You don't see like the implant edges on the top part of the breast. Um, Another benefit of it is that it tends to age with the patient better because, you know, with gravity, things get pulled down, especially with heavier uh, breast tissue or, let's say, implants, that it wants to pull it down. So having an implant placed behind the muscle, when the scar tissue forms around the implant, the scar tissue attached to the muscle, and the, scar, the muscle doesn't really, is not susceptible to the, to the gravity because, you know, it has a high tone, it's always moving, and so it holds the implant up higher. And so it resists some of the, the gravity changes uh, to breast tissue. Um, it doesn't cause any kind of, um, you know, functional strength loss for women who exercise and you know, do stuff, you know, chest training and stuff like that. You, you should, they're, even, even powerlifters who use their chest all the time, they do have implants under their, some, I've seen some have them under their, um, their chest muscle. And I would say it's pretty hard for them to say that they can, uh, they've noticed any decrease in their strength. The majority of the insertion of the pector major major, which is along the chest bone here, is still intact. So they still have that, that vector of, of uh, strength before the pectoralis major where it inserts. It's only the bottom, you know, maybe like five or six inches that it's attached to the lower chest wall, like on the bottom here, that it's released to get the implant underneath it. So I think it's a fantastic plan. This is the one I use for pretty much everyone. It's, um, there's, Kind of different three different uh, it's called dual plane techniques it depends on how much of the of the breast tissue is released from the muscle tissue to allow more of an implant to be underneath the breast tissue um so dual plane one two and three um so it's kind of it's, it's i do adjustments depending on the patient's um, breast tissue um their shape of the breast how much breast tissue they have where they're folded i make all these adjustments and i adjust that dual plane technique so the Talking about like the subglandular implant, uh, subglandular placement, you know, that, that, that placement is not very common. Um, it's definitely technically easy to do. Um, it's, it's basically straightforward. And, you know, I, and I, can, I can teach pretty much anybody to do that one. It's very, very, very simple to do. But the problem with that is, is that you have more of exposure of implant to the, um, 
to the breast tissue and you have a higher risk of having this phenomenon called, it's called a capsular contracture, which is, you know, forming a scar tissue around the implant, which everyone gets, but that scar tissue becomes very, very firm. And it's really, we think it's associated to a subclinical infection. So it's being rubbed um, by a little bit of bacteria and you're gonna get the highest risk of bacterial exposure when the implant touches the breast tissue. So the breast tissue is technically a gland and it has bacteria within those ducts. And so that's where we think we get a little bit of this. So you ever see women with, you know, really kind of hard looking balls on their chest and it just, they're like two stuck on balls. That's most likely a subglandular augmentation. I see that very commonly in, uh, in some bodybuilders, especially the older bodybuilders. Um, the, the appearance of it, it to me just stands out. It just, it just screams, you know, subglandular augmentation. Um, I would say most women who age with implants in the subglandular space uh, will notice that their breasts get saggier faster. It gets saggier faster because, you know, there's really nothing holding that weight of the breast with an implant up because the muscle is not immediately involved now. It's just really on top of the chest and your, the skin and the soft tissue just accept the gravity, so they tend to sag. Um, I don't do that augmentation very often. Um, I limit that augmentation strictly to women who've had, who are uh, either physique bodybuilding athletes or powerlifters, or some women who have these occupations where they do a lot of chest, you know, chest training, or they do a lot of physical, chest, you know, physical activity with their chest. And so that placement is done different. Um, women who've had a sub muscular plane, I have seen that been before with most often with a implant uh, that's placed during, through the armpit and the implant's kind of placed under the arm, implant. And I, I don't think it's done on purpose. I think it's just done incorrectly. And so the, the lower lower uh, chest muscles is not released completely. So you have the implant completely on the muscle. So their implants are always like up here, they're way up here because the muscle's so tight and it pulls everything up. So their implants are really, really high up and the breast tissue is down here. So they get the, it, it just looks a little odd. Um, they tend to animate more where the implant it tends to move as they, when they flex their chest, the implant goes up because the muscle cumber is basically part of the muscle at that point. So um, anyway, those are the three techniques. Uh, there's very generalized uh, kind of basic points of all three. Um, this is not by any means everything you know about breast augmentation. You know, we go to, we go to training six to eight years to learn this stuff. Okay. So don't go thinking that you know how to do breast augmentation because I've taught you three, three ideas. Very complicated. They're, the surgical techniques are very, very different. Um, so if you're getting a breast augmentation, you're considering just, you know, maybe just ask your surgeon, you know, what kind of, maybe, I've heard that there's techniques. What, what technique would you recommend for me? D does it really matter? I don't know. You know, I don't mind answering that question if someone asks me because um, I expect most patients to read about their procedure that they're going to have done. Um, so... If you're gonna work with me, and my answer is gonna be a dual plane technique. And I think it's the most flexible. I think it, lives, it, it will age with your body better in the longer term. So, great question. Thanks for, thanks, thank you as always for sending these questions over and I will get to more and I'll see you next week.